Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 306. I am your host, Norma Sanzo. Joining me today is Wills. Hello, people. I hope you're having a wonderful, splendiferous, happy donkey day. Oh, very cheerful. You call cheerful. I call injecting myself with a whole bunch of unknown compound to be sure that I don't feel sadness anymore. <laughs> I think they call that antidepressants. <laughs> well, there was a form of depressant in there. <laughs> oh, boys. <laughs> Uh, but Does hey. tons of alcohol count, Norman? <laughs> I don't think so. But anywho, in today's episode, we are going to talk about the My Little Pony movie and how it broke 60 million in the box office thanks to China. Yeah, so China actually did something good for a change. Didn't they always do good? Norman, this is not a political talk show, so we frankly don't have the time nor the audience to care about it. <laughs> all right, then, all right, then. But anywho, with the movie out in China for a while now, the movie now officially has its numbers and it broke the 60 million mark. That means uh, full foreign gross is at 38 million compared to the domestic 21 mil for the US audience. So that is pretty impressive. Well, with 60 million itself, that is actually pretty nice. I mean, it makes this movie quite profitable and pumps Hasbro up to maybe make a sequel and maybe have less corporate oversight of the next one. Uh, I think corporate oversight is going to be a must, but the idea for them to do another one, I'm not sure if you heard the news or the spoilers or the leaks. But they are in talks of doing a second one. Ah, yes. The second movie. Starring nothing but Glim Glam, Trixie, Chrysalis, and um, uh, Discord. They, they just sit in a room and talk <laughs> for the entire... That's the entire movie. It's one scene. It's uh, sort of an avant-garde sort of thing they're going for. <laughs> God. You, uh, you may joke, but from what I read, they are interested in calling Danny DeVito back on. Oh. Uh. Why? I got no idea. But he did the first one. I prefer if they got Emily Blunt back. Oh, yeah, true. More of my edge horse. I want more of my edge horse. Yeah, edge horse is fun horse. But I don't know. I mean, it's fun to see what Danny DeVito can do now because he was the original guy they hired to do the very first My Little Pony movie. So it'll be fun to see what he can do here in the 2018, 19, who knows. Sorry, we are in the 18s, so 19th or 20s, so we'll hope to see something great there. But besides that, I got no idea. This is just rumors and speculation. But yes, getting Emily Blunt back would be awesome. Who else you want back for the second movie? Probably most of the main cast. Maybe kind of have the other... Maybe have Applejack and Fluttershy have a purpose. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? I, I do like T. Diggs, Capper... And Emily Blunt, we need her. And the Griffin, I forgot her. No, no, the Griffin, the Hippogriff, I forgot her name. And the Pirates, yeah, we need them back. Like, I don't know, me talking this, like, the only character I can see them calling back is Capper and Tempest. Those are the only two I can see them calling back. As for the rest, if they're not there, they're cool. Well, that's even assuming they do a direct sequel or whatever. Who knows? Quite, quite honestly, I, I just will be interested to see what they come up with. I would prefer it if they did a story that uh, focuses more on the characters themselves and less on the uh, the new characters itself. I think that was the one weak point was that it had too many characters in the movie to fully concentrate on some to give you a good, you know, quality over quantity, I say. True, true, I agree. And it overshone the rest of the crew, like Applejack and Fluttershy, for example. And and still have a good villain song. Always have a good villain song. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And also have a catchy tune and sell the full soundtrack. I really want that intro song. God dang it. Uh, but let's head on to the next news. And Wills, have you been playing the My Little Pony mobile game by Gimelof? I haven't played that in many years, mostly because it got too large for my phone. And it kept crashing and erasing my save data. Oh wow! And it just—it's got so—it's got a few bugs on the mobile version. I don't know if there's a PC version or if 
and I don't have a tablet, so it has been relegated to my past. But I have played it. Yes, mm. I have. Same here for me too. I played it before and had fun, <laughs> if you can call it fun. Maybe I've grown up and learned more better games. <laughs> but are you interested in knowing how they make the game or make the assets? Mm, kind of. I mean, I assume they just, you know, press a make asset button. <laughs> Isn't that what animators do? Isn't that what we do, Norman? We just we just block in to your computer and you just sit down and press a make recording button and then it makes the whole podcast. Shh, oh, it is. It's a secret. Nobody should know. But <laughs> but if you're interested in knowing how the game of people do the assets for the My Little Pony game, uh, it's here. Uh, they show us a step-by-step thing. They have uh, base assets. They drew everything in. And it's a very fun video. You guys should watch it just to see how they work the magics. It's really interesting. Yeah, making game asset art is a pretty tricky business. I mean, you got to work around being sure it still fits within the current style of the game, and then you got to be sure it actually pops and is interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And layers upon layers and upon layers in Photoshop. <laughs> Hope you save. If not, you're going to have a terrible time when you crash. <laughs> Or finding out you've been drawing on the wrong layer the entire time. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, the wrong layer. There's only one thing that could be worse. That's finding out that you've saved everything in the wrong file format and it creates JPEG artifacts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, no. Uh, well, the, the Stinky Game Loft game, um, it's fun for people who are interested in it. I heard they recently added uh, Iron Will and Tempest. So, yay, that's cool. And on to another better free game with no DLCs. And this one involves ponies and dragons and Manticores and Dracarnacris and Changelings and Zebras. You can stop me now anytime you want. <laughs> But um, no, no, keep, 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 no, no, keep going, more Norman. Tell me, tell me, what else does this involve? Uh, it involves elks. What else do they have? Like they have the sea ponies, they have the breezy, the goats, the snow elks, wild <coughs> elks. What the hell? Griffins, a quest. Wow. Okay, they have a lot. Like all right, then. If you guys at home are confused what we're talking about here, it's Dungeons and Dragons, the homebrew. Game done by the oh, Norman. We mm. can't start this out rolling for initiative. Oh, mm. Okay, give me a second. I got a 17. No, that's a 12 on my base 20, so that's a 32. I'm good. So, <clears throat> um, recently there is a homebrew uh, DD pony Pathfinder thingy that just came out, and it's done by the Harby 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 ninety four, is it him and his crew? Yeah, it seems to be uh, written by Rhinosaur ninety four with contributions and inspiration from Doxel Apool, Cheese Doodle ninety six MLP forty uh, five E Dino Dragon from GTPI, with help from uh, the four chan boards uh, traditional games MLP. Silver Games Pony Finder and the Unearthed Arcana subreddit. Mm. So there's a lot of people and, in there. Uh, one's got a lot of cool art in it from many different artists from like Assassin Monkey, Divination, Hijacker, Zom, uh, 05, and <laughs> a lot more. The cool part is, right, uh, the, uh, what this book does is it gives credit to everybody who has stuff in this book right on the second page so you can see the cool artists themselves. Mm hmm. And this is free. Free! Wow, Norman, what could be a better price than free? It's free real estate. Go get it. <laughs> uh, oh, but getting back on track, I personally haven't really played D&D, so I can't really say much about this game. I did play a bit of Pathfinder a bit, but you played some D&D, right, Wills? I've played a couple few games of D&D &D and other traditional game RPGs. 
And what's your opinion on this one? Like for me, I, I look at this cover, I look at the work they did in this book and it is good high quality work. The way the page layout, the way that they do things here, it screams high quality. And the way that they even do the basic layout of image here to gradient through, you know, like background and stuff. Like I've seen some D&D books in my time and I've seen the official uh, My Little Pony Tales of Equestria book and it looks good. This one looks good. Well, yeah, I mean, it's well put together. It's a very thin book, though. It's no more than uh, 40 pages itself. Um, but this is meant more as a, you know, hey, if you want to transform your D&D sessions into a bit of pwn, here you go. It gives you the basic, uh, very, very it's, a, it's a bare bones, get you started sort of thing. Enough to give you a... Um, enough to give you a base to work with and the rest is up to a good GM to figure out, you know, okay, what am I going to do with this whole thing? And it's up to the good players to then ruin those entire plans that he spent three months working on. Just go in the dang dungeon. No, no, no. Oh, okay, fine. Walk past it. Walk past it. Ignore it. That's where the big bad evil guy is. And oh, okay, fine. You're going to spend the next three months in the, in the town. Great. Great for you. By the way, your entire town is ransacked by skeletons because you didn't walk in that dang cave. Well, it sucks to be you, folks. <laughs> uh, at least uh, they didn't face the uh, monstrous gazebo. <sighs> we do not talk about the gazebo. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes, yes. Uh, but still, I'm looking through this book, and wow, even though this is, what, under 40 pages, it is full of info. Like, if you already have your basic D, uh, D&D 5th edition core book, this will just fit in well. Like, I think they made this in mind, like, 5th edition core book, and put this one in there to ponify it. I think what I like about this is that when it talks about the individual races, it gives a good amount of details to them, but also shows that race's general opinion of other races. So you see what Earth ponies feel about on general. Again, these are your character doesn't have to follow them specifically, but it's usually what a, a general a general opinion is. So you can find out what the changeling opinion of other races is, or the breezy's opinion of other races, or the minotaur opinion of other races. It's really nice. It adds a bit more to the characters and the world building itself. Hmm. And I'm I'm looking at um, weapon sets here, and one of the weapons they have is the Alicorn Amulet. Uh, its description is. Wondrous item, very rare. It requires amulet, uh, requires amulet by a spellcaster who is not a warlock. This amulet turns any smell slut the wearer has of fifth level or lower into the highest level slot the attuned creatures have, up to fifth level. Curse. The amulet is cursed and can only be removed by the wearer. Even the remove curse spell will not work. The wearer must succeed on a charisma saving throw each day at DC twenty five, or they will not willingly take it off for twenty four hours, and so on. And those description there is like, oh wow, they thought of everything. I kind of like how they have the. Uh... Like, like I said earlier, the uh, opinions of other races, you know, the changelings think is like um, you know, ponies, impulsive, emotional, and overly friendly. Fine company for a moderate amount of time, but trying in large doses. They're silly little creatures, good primary source to feed on. Griffins, however, are big dumb bags of meat and feathers that could probably be fooled by writing not a changeling on your forehead. <laughs> Otherwise, similar similar to ponies, although it hurts more if you get caught by one. Feed on them if no ponies are available, or if you want to try exotic fare. You know, the griffins are like, uh, griffins are like, uh, goats. Do not trust goats. I don't know what they're planning, but I know I don't want to be involved. Oh, I'm looking at the changeling, and 
uh, there's the Diamond Dogs one. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Could you do it? Let's see here. Diamond Dogs. What do Diamond Dogs think about the races? Ponies has always asked for friendship this and friendship that. It's not enough to drive dog nuts. Pony weak for count on others. They make easy works. Give us up for some dogs to scare them. <laughs> Goats, however. Well, old eyes, older knowings. Dog not want to know. No shiny there. Only pain. Blood and pain never make works. Griffins are, uh... Catbird are strong! Catbird! Yes, we call him Catbird. <laughs> oh, wow. And chainflings are dirty snakes! Do you have gems and then hide too deep? If dog got paws on sneak, it would pay! <laughs> oh, well, well, still, that that is fun. That is fun. Like, oh, <laughs> that, that's creative. I have to say that yeah, it's worth a shot. Like, if you do play D&D &D and you're a fan of the My Little Pony show, you should try it out. Like, I really want to try this one out and see what I can do with my crew. Maybe we'll fight a gazebo. <laughs> unless, you're, uh, unless you're an angry carpenter, then you can just build a gazebo with your fists. <laughs> uh, but that's the news for this week. It's another short news week, but hey, um, we try, we try. And let's head into the next topic. What have we been doing with our week? And Wills, what have you been doing, man? Oh, good gosh, where to start? Well, at the beginning, nothing. Nothing? Absolutely freaking nothing since last week. I mean, already talked about games, already talked about art. Already talked about work. The best I can probably say is um, I played Overwatch and got to Platinum, so I'm out of gold finally. Yay, awesome. Congratulations. No, no, Norman. It just it just opens up a new slice of hell for me. Okay, explain why. Because now the thing is, Platinum is the true yellow hell. Because you have people here who are decent on their own, but don't quite understand how to work as a team. You see, you're reaching now the point where you have to be, your, your own good accomplishments are not are going to be bubkiss if you can't work together with your team. You could get a quadra kill, but it doesn't matter if there's two that are still alive and the rest of your team is dead. Oof, that's not worth it. Or if you get, you know, both a Widow and a Hanzo on your team and both can't hit the broadside of a barn. What that plat? How could that be? Um, probably because they took away Hanzo's scatter. <laughs> Not yet. Not <laughs> so yet. Requires some skill. But still, um, how about Monhan? Monster Hunter? Mm -hmm. Monster Hunter, yeah. You know, they recently added a hat in there where it's a wiggler cap. It's this tall, tall hat that just wiggles around. Basically increases your neck by like four feet. Why would you? Why? Because there's nothing quite like wearing a big buff set of armor, but having this giant snake-like head on you that looks like a, a doll wiggling back and forth, wobble, 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 wobble. <laughs> From what I know, that the recent DLC they had was the Street Fighter V crossover with Ryu and Sakura. Oh uh, yeah, you could do a Hadouken. But from what people told me, that is kind of there before they added the DLC. Yes, but the only way you could access it, however, is by having a save data on your console of Street Fighter V. So if you have never played Street Fighter V, you didn't get access to it. Oh, well, you could always rent the game. Uh, but still, but still, um, how's that going for you? Well, I mean, it's still a fun game. It's great to pick up and play nowadays. But, I mean, again, the big thing I'm working on right now is the whole move, mm -hmm. which after this weekend should be done, over with. And then we can get back to nice and normal things of procrastinating on all our projects. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then, all right, then. And, well, uh, if that's your week, um, I'll start off with mine. And my week has been really same old, same old. Uh, the you know, Overwatch thing, the... Hmm, uh, doing nothing. But um, here's the thing. Recently, my risk, both of them, left and right, are aching bad, like... The mu muscles, nerves, I don't know what they want to call it, are aching. And went to the doctor, 
and whatnot. And they told me that I need to visit a specialist. What do they call those doctors who are specialists at the risk? I forgot. I actually am not sure, but you know what? That's what we have Google here for. All right. You you go Google. I'll keep on talking. <clears throat> but uh, when... Orthopedic yes. assistants. Orthopedic doctors. Yes, orthopedic. Orthopedic. Thank you. That was fast. Uh, so, anywho, I went to see... No, didn't went to see because my sister told me that to book an appointment and whatnot would just cost me six, or five to six hundred local bucks. Uh, for point of reference, a dollar is up to three to four of my local currency. So Damn. you can just imagine how bad that is. So uh, my mom told me, why not you go to a masseuse or massage place, you know, where they massage your bodies and whatnot. You, you know what I'm talking about, Wolf. Yeah, massage therapy. Uh-huh. And that, that, is, that is a thing to actually, there are plenty of exercises you can perform to help prevent, because it sounds like you might have the onset of carpal, carpal puddle. That's what, no, or something that's what another doctor friend of mine told me. Um, he also plays the video games with me. And I did notice that every time after I play, um, I don't do the wrist exercise, which does make sense in the long term. But that's besides the point. The point of the matter is right now is that um, mom told me go to a massage therapist. So I did. And it was interesting. I got beaten up <laughs> and um, squeezed upon and cracked and whatnot. Like, it hurt. But the next day, hey, it's feeling better. And it went again and stuff. Hey, they know what they're doing. They know how to reposition the human body, man. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I did it again and... Wrists are feeling better, but I should do the wrist exercise at the same time too. And you know what? Uh, I'm starting to feel good. Like the wrist thing is interesting. I might go again in the future sooner. Who knows? But I'm just saying that if you feel a bit tired, if you feel a bit, you know, like, oh, your body's aching, don't be shy and just go to a massage place the good one not with the happy endings please what's wrong with those norman jeez you have something against the practice of people just you know giving you uh you know, happy endings i mean gosh seriously they need those in order to keep fantasy stories alive how else are the prince and princess going to fall in love i don't know <laughs> but <clears throat> what you never been to a massage parlor slash book uh book writers club no that's new yeah. What do you think they were talking about when they meant happy endings? I, don't, I do not want to know. But um, on top of that, if you guys go check out my personal Twitter, that is at Norman Sanzo, I found some radical stuff. Really, really old radical stuff. Yo. Well, I'm not sure if you saw it yet or not, but was cleaning the room, decided to, you know, just clean it up a bit, and I found it. I found my neon purple or neon pink Game Boy Color and it was glorious. And to top that off, I also found the Game Boy Color camera and its printer too. We're getting kind of old here, Norman. Are you sure our audience even knows what a Game Boy Color is? Oh, for you guys back in the days, way back in the days, there's this thing called... Game Boy, and the Game Boy was the end all be all for portable gaming. Because back then you had the Pokemon, Pokemon's um, from yellow, red, blue, gold, and silver, and you also had classic games like the Tetris and whatnot. But personally, for my collection, I only had the Pokemon's. And Wills, if you go check out the link I just sent you, it's there, man. Even with the Game Shark. <laughs> oh my gosh, even a Game Shark. <laughs> I know. I'm bad. But still, that is just like, oh wow. Uh, it, it was fun to see. But the downside for this one is that the screen cracked. And uh, it, it was not working. Oh. 
Well, that kind of sucks because I don't really know any way to fix that, man. Uh, I, I'm thinking that you could by just looking for spare parts online. I'm sure there is, but the breakdown of the whole machine and whatnot, like I, I, do, I don't dare. Like I put in batteries, by the way, and it light up. Oh, nice. Yeah, but there's no sound, even with the cartridge in it. And the screen, there's nothing. I, I was just hoping for something, but nah, like probably I could get it fixed if I really, really wanted to. But uh, you know what? I'm just going to say I found it. I'm happy. I'm just going to put it up for display. Uh, the other thing, the other thing. Oof. Wills, uh, do you know Digimon? Dip, dip, dip. Digimon. Digimon. Dip, dip, dip. Yes, I know Digimon. Yeah, go, go check it out. <laughs> In this link we have discovered oh gosh old digimon memorabilia <laughs> i know uh, <clears throat> so for people who don't know or for people uh, just look me up on the facebooks i i think it's norman sanzo yes but anywho um i found all my old digimon toys or digivices as you call it <laughs> and oh god they were basically fancy little da- Tamagotchis that, in, unlike other Tamagotchis, you could raise, take care of, and then have them fight to the death. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. And it's fun. Like Just discovering it again make, fills me with glee and joy. And, oh man, just talking about this again, just looking for toys again, I'm like, guess what I found? Like, I didn't take a picture of it, but I found a box copy in box Super Street Fighter 2. In box. Dang. And wow, okay, that's cool. And I found a good condition Mega Man 7 box with manual. Unfortunately, the game is somewhere else. So uh, I'm frustrated with that. But all in all, wow, like looking back at the past, yeah, damn, like childhood memories, man. Well, hey, I mean, found a lot of old good stuff. Mm-hmm. Might even be worth a tech if you don't want it no more. Uh, probably. Who knows? Well, but, but it needs to be in good condition, but nah, but most of my stuff are not in good condition. Oh, and I also found an Xbox One. Oh, you found a very large paperweight. <laughs> Uh, not really. I'm, I'm talking about the Xbox OG. Remember that? Before Xbox screwed up their naming conventions? Mm, well, hey, I guess I'll call the next one the Xbox because you should buy it. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> but I, I found it and, oh man, like brings back memories. I remember playing Need for Speed Underground on that machine and having a lot of fun. But the unfortunate side of it is that my friends were playing it on the PlayStation 2 and we couldn't fight each other with our cars. So, oh, uh, that sucks. Oh, man. Old days, man, old days. Uh, but anywho, that's for the show. Like, that's been going on with my week. And I think that's... Uh, and I think me finding old stuff is the highlight of my week. But anywho, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at show at gmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show, And for me, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on polyverlive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you please don't mind, do subscribe to our newest endeavor, the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you'll find me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heartsong, and Guest of the Week, reviewing the Pony episodes, comics, and movies. And sometimes we like to do some other things. One of the few things that we recently have done is the Miracles Ladybug. That's interesting. Yes. We pony folks talk about them ladybugs. Hmm. I don't know, man. Any more talk of Miss Mer- Miraculous Ladybug, and I think one of you is going to snap. <laughs> and I'm going to bet it's not me. <laughs> Place your bets, people. Who is it? Is it going to be Seppi or Silver? <laughs> well, hey, could be worse. It could be uh, 
you could be talking about that same studio's previous um, uh, property that it ran to the ground, which was Code Lyoko. Oh wow! Okay, I, 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 this I need to look. Code Lyoko. Why? Why this? Oh, the this foreheads, one. Norman. The foreheads. Oh, this one. Oh, I, I heard a lot of good things about this one. What happened? That is a show for another day. And you know, who knows? Maybe if there's enough interest, maybe something to do on the other show. And I'm if calling you interest. on, man. You bring you brought this up. If we have to do this, hey, I'm going you're to... talking to someone who was actually a I was actually a very big fan of this show. I had to go back and watch all the episodes of the last season because they were aired horribly out of order. But I loved this show and I loved its concept. And as a kid, I did not notice that the foreheads were gigantic. <laughs> like, seriously, these kids could actually put up ad space. <laughs> uh, but anywho, yeah. Uh, if we do quote Lyoko, I'm dragging you in, man. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. Home and coffee.com we have your support you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me talking about the thank yous i like to thank lurker cat star stream master of lag amy mark charles lucky knight and also tristan thank you so much guys for the awesome support you are all awesome so anyway i have been Norman sanzo I have been Will Eisen. And we'll guys see you next week with another fun show of the MBS show. See ya. Toodaloo, folks.